Hi everyone, my name is Sakura Mycee Saravicea, but you can call me Sakara or Miss Yeast for short. I am a fungus and proud of it, and you probably know me as the organism that helps you humans make such tasty treats like bread, wine, and beer. I'm able to do this because I can turn sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide. You're welcome. Anyways, food and drinks are not what I'm all about, and in the past century, I have been used for much more. You can say that I'm finally reaching my full potential. Given that anyone viewing this video is likely interested in the great field of biotechnology, I would like to tell you what contributions I have made to research in the past, as well as how I'm being used these days. To start, you need to know some of the reasons why I am so widely used in research. First, I am low maintenance and therefore don't require much to be cultured. I can also clone myself through a process called budding, and so I can make lots of mini-me's in a very short period of time, less than two hours. Additionally, just like bacteria, I can be easily manipulated in the lab. As an example, one of my favorite things to do, if asked nicely that is, is to take up or hold on to small rings of DNA, called plasmids or yeast artificial chromosomes, that contain genes that are of interest to a researcher. The researcher has to first clone their gene into a circular plasmid before they give it to me, but after that, I can take care of the rest. Once I have the chromosome, I can transcribe the gene into mRNA and then translate it into a protein. E. coli can do this too, but I'm a little bit better because I can modify proteins after they've been translated. This means that I can add things like glycosal groups to proteins, which is often essential for their function. This whole process is called transformation, and the first time I was involved in this was in the late 1970s. Did I mention I was old? The first gene that was ever given to me through transformation was the LEU2, which is a gene that codes for an enzyme that allows me to make the amino acid leucine when there's none around. LEU2 is considered an oxytrophic marker, which in yeast are used as selectable markers. This means if I have a plasmid and have been successfully transformed, I can grow on media that lacks leucine. This functions in the same way as antibacterial selectable markers in bacteria. As I am so useful in the lab, lots of resources have gone into figuring out my genetics and biochemistry. In fact, in April of 1996, my complete genome was sequenced. Although you and I look very different, researchers have discovered that many of my genes are very similar to yours. In fact, 20% of genes that we have in common play an important role in human disease. This includes genes that are involved in cancer, including many that are linked to regulating the cell cycle. In fact, a group of scientists, Professors Paul Nurse, Tim Hunt, and Dr. Leyland Hartwell won a Nobel Prize in 2001 for helping to identify what genes were related to cancer are highly conserved in yeast, plants, and many different types of animals. Who would have thought we would have so much in common? Other genes we have in common are involved in human drug metabolism, so I am also being used to screen new human drugs, especially new cancer drugs. Remember transformation, my favorite thing to do? Now I'm going to give you a brief update on a couple of the labs that are utilizing me and the transformation technique to do some exciting research, including manufacturing drugs, screening, and learning about cancer. A lab at Stanford University used this technique and gave me the ability to express the genes of 21 different enzymes derived from plants, mammals, bacteria, and yeast. When these genes are expressed and translated to protein, I was able to break down the sugar called thebane into opioid drugs like hydrocodone and morphine. This means that instead of waiting around for plants to grow so morphine can be obtained, I can make this drug continuously. The researchers published their exciting work in the prestigious Journal of Science. I guess you can say that I'm kind of a celebrity these days. Less recently, transformation has been used by researchers to help determine the function and significance of certain genes and proteins in cancer. For example, a group studied the importance of a molecule called Becklin-1 and found that this molecule was able to induce cells to essentially eat themselves, resulting in a decreased tumor genesis. Lastly, the Sinclair lab at Harvard used yeast to discover a protein that could be the key to discovering the fountain of youth. Yeast age like humans, and this lab discovered that a single mutation in the gene SIR1 resulted in longevity. 
they then discovered that SIR1 protein plays a role in both gene suppression as well as DNA repair. When the yeast grows old, this multitasking gene can no longer result in gene suppression, and so new genes start getting expressed in places they shouldn't. This was a very important finding because it is already known that some aging diseases, like type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's, are associated with inappropriate gene expression in the certain tissues. Fascinatingly, they found that when the SIR2 protein was overexpressed in yeast, they were able to survive 30% longer. Lastly, they found that this dysfunction of this protein triggers aging in mice and most likely humans as well. Anyways, this is just a taste of the things that I can do. I invite you to explore our website to get a more in-depth look at what yeast and yeast transformation has and can do for you. To start, you need to know some of the reasons why I am so used. I am. Oh my God. Why? To start, you need to know some of the reasons why I am so widely used in research. First, I am low maintenance and therefore don't require much to be cultured. I can also clone myself through a process called budding. Okay, this is